بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين حبيبي إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلى الله عليك يا مولانا غابا يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله على غايك يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله على غايك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين صلى الله على غايك يا ابن فاطمة المظلومة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد For the love of Abba Abdullah Hussain, with the loudest of our voices, sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad. And for the love of our beloved first Imam, with the loudest of our voices, sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad. And for the love of Imam Sahib al-Asr wa-Zaman, Ruhi wa-Arwahu al-Alameen li-Turabi maqdamik al-Fida, Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Adham Allahu ujurana wa ujurakum bi musabina bi Abi Abdillah al-Husayn. وجعلنا الله وإياكم من الطالبين بسأره مع إمام المنصور المعيد. First of all, we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us this opportunity and this moment. Indeed, it is a moment that we need to appreciate and be grateful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the sense that if you look around, you realize that there are مؤمنين and مؤمنات who were with us last year and they are nowhere to be found this year. Some are seriously ill, some are battling, and some are in their lives of barza. So it is very, very important and recommended that when we begin our majalis, we need to first appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Quran makes it very clear, if we are grateful to Allah on account of his mercies and bounties, Allah will increase us of his mercies and bounties. It is not because you are healthy conscious that is why you are still alive. 
It is not because you are better than those who have gone. That is why you are still alive. It is out of the tawfiqat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has chosen us and has granted us this opportunity once more to affiliate ourselves and to renew our allegiance with the household of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him. So therefore we thank Allah and we cannot thank Allah enough. Mu'mineen and mu'minat, the verse I've just quoted from Quran. Maybe you've heard this verse before. Or maybe it is the first time that you are hearing the verse. At the end of the day, the essence of majalis of Ahlul Bayt is to come and remind ourselves of the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a platform to connect with oneself. It is a platform to connect with Allah. It is a platform to connect with the universe. It is a platform to connect with Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu. So therefore, it is important when I attend the majlis to know the reason as to why we attend the majlis. You don't just attend the majlis for the sake of attending the majlis, but you attend the majlis because it is a divine institution. It is a place to learn something new for your life of dunya and after. That is why we have majlis every year. Otherwise, if I and you attend the majlis, and at the end of that majlis, I fail to take a lesson or two, then there is no point attending the majalis. So therefore, the verse I quoted is Surah Al-Tawbah, verse 119. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in this ayah is inviting mu'mineen and mu'minat, saying, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'asadiqin. Allah is not calling insan. I want to pay attention to this ayah. It's very important. And Kindly, every ayah that we quote or I personally quote, go and double check those verses of Quran and try to dissect and reflect those verses so that we are able to benefit more from this majlis of Abu Abdullah. Allah said, Oh, you who believe, it took Allah, be conscious of the teachings of Allah. Then at the end, Allah said, Wakunu ma'asadiqin, be with the truthful ones. Now, I and you know very well from the traditions of Al Bayt. The highest manifestation of the truthful ones are Ahlul Bayt. So therefore we are here to connect with the truthful ones. We are here when we connect with the truthful ones, then we are able to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's Surah to tawbah 119. Now inshallah in the coming night, I'm just going to give you a summary of what to expect from me inshallah. And feel free when you have any question, anything which is not clear, before you take it somewhere, come to me. Let's look at it and let's examine it properly, inshallah. My theme of discussion for this first 12th night is going back to basics. That is my theme. Because I've been attending so many majalis. I've been reciting majalis myself for many years, more than 10 years now. But Muharram come, Muharram go. Muharram come, are we still the same? I don't understand. Our akhlaq is the same. Our approach to Quran is the same. Our approach to insan is the same. Our approach to al bayt is the same. And every year when Muharram set in, we all get together in the mosque to lament and mourn for al bayt when the essence of lamentation and the essence of attending this majalis is to bring about reformations in our lives. So therefore, the theme is what? Going back to basics. I may mention things that you know of. Let it be a reminder for you. I may mention things that you've not heard of. Let it be something that you want to take on board and think about it and digest and discuss and try every night after every majlis. Be it my majlis or of any majlis, majlis of Samarat Sayyid. As you go back home, discuss with your families in cars. Ask your wife, what have you picked up from that majlis of tonight? Ask your son, what have you picked up from that? We don't just come, sit, listen, and then go back. I just want you to pick up one thing from my majlis, not more than one. As some scholars mentioned, we do not attend majlis to amass information, but we attend majlis to take one or two lessons. Take a lesson, pick up something that you're going to work on, 
So that at the end of this majlis, the 12th Imam will look at your face and say, I'm proud of you. Otherwise, we may have a lot of information without doing anything about it. So every night, I edge and edge myself. When you come, take something. Think about it. Because when you go back home, the next day you're going to work, you're so tired. As you go back home, that 10 minutes you spend on the way with your family, discuss it. Going back to basics. So the topics we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at Azadari in 21st century. Who is a real Azadar of our side? Is it the one who were black? Is it the one who recites Marcia? Is it the one who recites Noah? Is it the Maulana who sits on the member? Who is a real Azadar that Alul Bayt are proud of? We'll look at it slowly but surely. And then we'll look at a topic such as the stages of Azadari from the lives of Ahlul Bayt up until today. Do we go into Azadari the way they used to do it that day? Oh no, time has changed. We need to look at it differently. We'll discuss this. And I want to humbly lend me your hearing. Let's unpack it properly. And anything unclear, feel free to ask. We are all students and we still learn. We will look at topics such as correlation between the movement of Abba Abdullah and that of the 12th Imam. Because, believe me or not, the uprising of Abba Abdullah will remain without the uprising of Imam Uzama. So therefore, it is important I understand the values established by Abba Abdullah and use them to prepare for the reappearance of the 12th Imam. Correlation between the two. We'll discuss this into details, inshallah. And then we'll look at the spiritual essence of Ashura and Karbala. Spirituality. Because at the end of all this, every Maulana who come, you spend money, you bring us here. The benefit of it is to reform and change you. Without change, you have wasted the money. It's to take us to Allah. So we look at that spirituality of Karbala, spirituality of Ashura, spirituality of Abba of the law. So therefore, in this, we will look at the spiritual aspect of the personality of Imam al Hussein. And then, of course, we'll look at some social topics, such as disintegration between the older generation of our community and the youth of our community. So much disintegration in our communities. This is for the elderly person and this is for the youth. We need to look at it. How Abba Abdullah brought people like Muslim Bun Ausaja, people like Ali Yun Al Akbar together under one umbrella. Important. We need to look at the relevant issues, pertinent issues within our communities. And there is no better platform to address these issues than the member of Abba Abdullah. And then, of course, we'll look at marriages and how marital relationship can influence either positive or negative the terbiya of our children. And then we'll look at questions of culture and religion. What is culture? What is religion? And the last topic we'll look at will be to look at materialism and spirituality. I'm so busy with my life. How do I connect with Allah? But tonight's topic should serve as an introduction to all the topics to come. Ayah, Surah to Tawbah, Quran 9, verse 119. Allah is calling you, Mu'min, Mu'mina, fear Allah and be with the truth. To be with the truthful means to be with Ahl al You don't be with them just with Zaban, with action. What are we going to do tonight? So we're going to look at movement of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, dash, reflection and analysis. We're going to reflect tonight and analyze the movements. And what is the aim of tonight's discourse? 
is for I and you to understand the main aim and objective of Abba Abdullah. So that when you attend the every majlis, your aim is to achieve that aim. How are we going to do it? We're going to do it in two ways only. And inshallah will not take your time. First stage of the examination will look at Hawiyatul Haraka. The identity of the movement of Abba Everything has an identity. You have your identity. When people are to introduce you, they use your identity to introduce you. The movement of Abba Abdullah has his own identity. I ask you a question. My father, for 20 years, he's been attending Majalis. 30 years, he's been attending Majalis. 50 years, he's been attending Majalis. It's a simple question. What is the identity of the movement of Abba Abdullah? A non Muslim comes to you. Non Shi'i comes to you. Define the movement of Abba Abdullah for me. So, first stage of the examination will look at the identity of this movement. And then the last stage will answer some shubahat, some questions that sometimes people raise when it comes to the movement of Abba Abdullah. So that we understand what made Abba Abdullah to go out. And today, in this day and age, we still face with those challenges. And what meaning and what meaning? I repeat. Every majlis you attend, Allah will ask you on the day of Qiyamah, what have you learned out of it? You see, I'm a speaker. I get invited by people like Abdul Asif, Ali, Abbas, Rajani. Allah bless them. After majlis, they give me money. Hadiyah. Allah, I cry. I'm telling you from myself. So, this thing that I take. Have I effected positive change in them? I always say to myself, Imam, like our 11th Imam. 11th Imam. Pay, I want you to pay, kindly pay attention. He had no opportunities like this to sit on member and talk to people. It used to be what? Sign languages. Imam Who is Sheikh Noor? And I'm not saying this because you are sitting in front of me. I sometimes cry. I said, you've been sitting on this member for many years. Have you effect positive change on people? Likewise comes to you. You've been attending this much. You've been helping us. Has that majlis changed your heart? So, let this Muharram meaning in Muhammad, be a vehicle for change. You see, as Ramadan, we change holy Adam now. After Ramadan, we go back. Muharram, the same begins. Everybody becomes holy. Look, the Imam of our time is in Gaiba and he's crying every day. He's looking for pure hearts. And wallah, if we are sincere, one majlis is enough to prepare for the reappearance of him. Now let's go through our examination. Number one. The identity of the movement of Abba Abdullah. It's a theological discussion. See, when scholars discuss the identity of the movement of Abba Abdullah, he said there are two opinions as to what constitutes the identity of the movement of Imam. You would ask a lot of these questions. Some na'udhu billah astaghfirullah. They said Imam Hussein committed suicide. Inshallah, through these discussions, you should be able to solve that problem. First, they said we have what is called a haraka in fi'ali. And we have a haraka tun fi'li. He said movements are of two kinds. We have emotional movement or reactionary movement. And we have actual movement. Now, some of the view that the movement of Abba Abdullah, and I'll explain into details about it, is a reactionary movement. It's emotional movement. And some of the view that no, the movement of Abba Abdullah is an actual movement. 
just understand the terms and I will explain. Some of the view that know the movement of Abdullah is both emotional and actual. Now, what is emotional? What is reactionary? Is to react to something. Barabar, you react to something. Like something happens and you emotionally challenge it. So they said, Abba Abdullah alayhi salam, when he began his movement from Medina, a small animation, to Mecca, up to Karbala, Il Muqaddasa, he was reacting to something. Yani something happened, and Abba Abdullah wasn't happy, and he reacted to that. That is the movement. But actually, is what? He said, no, 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 no. He did not react to anything. In fact, before the birth of Abba Abdullah, the movement was planned by Allah. Now look at this, brothers and sisters. We believe in both. And I'm going to take you through. But number one, Abba Abdullah went out in response to certain behaviors. So in other words, beginning, he reacted to certain things. And there are three major things that Abba Abdullah reacted to. And today, it is happening even within our communities. I always tell people, before you look at the world, look at your communities. The first one was what? Al-Qada ala nakhbat al Pay attention to this line of meaning in the This is when Banu Umayya took over. Listen very carefully. When you go to school and your friends ask you, why you come, you wear black, you do this, try to explain to them logically. Give them proofs. You've been attending Majalis for many years. You should have an answer. Don't just talk for talking sake. Number one, Banu Umayyah, when they took over, what did they do? They silenced and killed the prominent companions of Imam Ali. Hijr ibn Adi al-Kindi. Rushayd al-Hijri. Umar ibn Hamak al khuzai Top companions of Amir al muminin Banu Umayya, they slain them one after the other. To some extent, Abu Abdullah wrote a letter to Muawiyah one moment. Alasta katilan li Hijri ibn Adi al-Kindi. Aw min kanda wa riwasa. Are you not the one who killed the Hijr? And you know, Umar ibn Hamak al khuzai he was killed in Basra. And when they killed him in Basra, you know what they did? They mounted his head on spear. And by then, of course, the headquarters was in Sham. So they moved him from Basra to Sham. So some scholars said, Abba Abdullah could not handle this. He had to stand up. Because the zulm was too much. People were losing their lives. Look at today, Yemen. How many people are losing their lives daily? In Pakistan, Parachina and the rest. In Palestine, that is why we know Kullu Yawmin Ashura wa Kullu Ardin Karbala. Read it and bring it to the contemporary world. Imam Hussein's revolution will remain alive until the reappearance of Imam Hussein. They were killing them like flies. So Imam Hussein said, no, I cannot sit and keep I need to do something. Number two, you know the strategy of Banu Umayyah? At Tajwiul Iqtisadi. Economical sanction. Read the histories. They sanctioned Ahlul Bayt and their followers economically with the aim of silencing them. You read the words. Ibn al Athir fil Kamil is our beloved Sunni narrator. He said, Muawiyah wrote a letter to his, to his governors. Tell
kalinda man kamata alayhi annahu yuhibbu aliya famuhu min ad-diwan waqta urizkahu wa ata oh my governors whoever is established that he loves ali remove him from the city and cut off its risk and source of sustenance it happened that is why our beloved fifth imam mentioned wallahi lakad qutilat shi'atuna imam al baqir he said wallah they killed our shias and he said wallah it happened that if a person showed his love for ali he would be killed and his wealth would be taken from him some said aba abdullah saw this zulm coming and he could not sit and looked at it happening he had to stand up and do something about it. Number three strategy, which is happening today in our community, unfortunately, claim to be Shias, we claim to be lovers of Al Bayt, but sometimes morally we are not upright. You know what Banu Maya did? Allahu Akbar. Khudus al Tabaqiyah fil Mushtama. They divided communities into different classes: higher class, lower class. lowest class where do you see now community like that is when poor person dies sometimes you come wallah you cry when a poor person dies in our community you find five ten people only going for janaza but when a rich person dies everybody want to show his face khudus at tabaqiya no no is khoja pakistani is lower level Today you find our own communities unfortunately you find this one they say these are freshies and these are non freshies Atibiani Banu Umayya did the same Is it okay if you are Umayya people like Marwan people like Zaid ibn Thabit people like Omar ibn al-As they were given a higher level the rest very low level today you go to our communities we've got what is called ansar and muhajir who are the ansar they said those who are born british and muhajir those immigrants and our own shias are doing that when are we going to stop this and prepare properly for the reappearance of imam azama yet we come with try baba abdullah Allah! it's a simple arithmetic But Banu Umayyah did that to Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam and they gave the wealth to who to only the people that is why narration mention when people like Marwan died they had a lot of wealth so now these are some of the reasons that scholars mention made our Abdullah to embark on that movement and these are the reasons for reactionary and emotional movements now quickly let's go to the second one because of time is actual movements that no even if umayya did not do that aba abdullah was still going to go out yani the movement of aba abdullah was divinely planned if it was divinely planned what was the purpose Allah it had only one purpose but he has he push it to become three purposes only one what was it reformation i don't know you you've heard this reformation billion times but are you reformed how is your salat my brother how is your salat is there anyone that you are not talking to here How many times you gossip? When last did you recite Quran? Aba Abdullah went out to reformers. From Majlis or from Marsia to Majlis and from Majlis to Ma'atam, these are all mechanisms for reformation. To change your akhlaq and to change your behavior. to make us better human beings to begin with that is why abu abdullah wrote letter 
to his beloved brother. It's a known letter. Tonight is an introduction. Inni lam akruju asharan. I was saying, I'm not going out for any mischievous aim. Wala batanan. Wala mufsidan. Wala riyaa. I'm not going out for me to be praised. Today, me, Maulana, if I'm not praised, I, be, I become bad. You see the ikhlas? Where is the ikhlas? From the member, there is no ikhlas up until now. Wallah! I don't know if Imam Zaman comes today. Who will be spared? Today is me, 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 who, 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 that's it. Abba Abdullah went out to reform. He said, Innama kharashtu litolab al-islah fi ummati jaddi Rasulullah. I am out, oh my beloved brother, to seek reformation among my ummah. It's reformation of who? Here I want to draw your attention. The first reformation about Abdullah sorted was the reformation of the leadership. Oh, leadership, leadership. Our leaders like Brother Asad and them. Leaders. Allah, if leaders are reformed, we will all be okay. Allah, you look at our organization since Mullah Asgar left. Who came better than Mullah Asgar? Allah, today, what's our people are attacking each other. People are insulting each other. People are defaming each other's character through WhatsApp, through email. Yani, the haram we are committing through social media is even worse than the physical haram. Wallah, be careful, mu'mineen, as we begin Muharram. Wallah, leaders are killing each other. Abba Abdullah went out to reform a leader by the name Yazid. Today, Yazid is not there, but the characters of Yazid is alive. I am scared. Allah. Will I ask you, Kashim, my father, you sitting next to me? If Azrael appears to you now and tell you your time is up, are you ready? This is Muharram. We need to reform. Innama kharashtu li talab al-islah fi ummati jaddi wa inni amur bil ma'arufi wa anha anil munkari wa asiru bi sirati jaddi rasul. I am out to seek reformation. So therefore, the sole aim of Abba Abdullah is to reform. Shaykh Noor, change your akhlaq. Brother Ali Rajani, change your akhlaq. Sayyidina Al-Aziz, change your akhlaq. Change your attitude. Change your behavior. But Yazid was not budging. This, I want the young ones, you to understand this. Because he said, no, why Imam Hussein, he knew he will, he will die. Why did he go? So I'm taking you slowly. The aim was just to reform. But Yazid refused to reform. Wallahi refused. It's like I come to brother Muhammad. I said, Muhammad, reform. Instead of keeping quiet or abiding by, he imposed certain things on Abba Abdullah. That took Abba Abdullah to the next aim. What did Yazid do? He said, no, I'm not going to reform. In, instead, Hussein, I demand you either pay allegiance or I kill you. Yes, sir. So from reformation, where did Abba Abdullah go? Eizazuddin. Maintaining the honor of the religion. Because they said, put your hand. Allah, when a Muslim leader becomes a servant of the community, you should know that is the beginning of the downfall of that community. Yazid said, no, no, no. If you pay allegiance, you are okay. So Abdullah said, now it's not about the reformation anymore. It's about maintaining the dignity of religion. And how do you maintain that dignity? It's for me not to stretch my hand to Yazid. I said, inna da'i ibn da'i kad rakkaza bayna thnataini bayna thsillati wa dhilla wa hayahata min nathilla. Allah Hussein, who is Hussein today? Allah, who is Hussein? We only give these lectures, mata, mata, mata. who is real Hussein? Abdullah said, Wallah, the non identity, the son of non identity, is confining me between two things 
between dignity and misery, but misery far away from me. Allah is like some of our Maulanas, you know, some community members come. Give this lecture on the member and praise us. If you don't do your job, it is gone. And Bicharu Maulana, Allahu Akbar. You see the deen? You see the deen? No, no, you praise that flan, flan. You don't, this, this is a reality of thing. This is a reality. This is a reality. I know I'm, I'm a resident alim for many years. I know what I'm talking about. So, no, no, you know this? Don't touch this. If you touch, your job gone. And Maulana, because Bicharo, <laughs> no ikhlas. And not following the root of Abba Abdullah is that to Shiva. Ya Allah, my dunya is cut off. So it is also deen Abba Abdullah. And Abba Abdullah refused to do that. And Yazid said, wherever you find him, even if it is next to Kaaba, kill him. What was the choice available for Abba Abdullah? The last choice was to go out and live. That was the only choice. Because Abu Abdullah wanted to do Musala. Come, let's sit, let's talk. Reform. Wallah, Abu Abdullah didn't want to be seen on top. Abu Abdullah didn't go out because he wanted to be seen on top. Leader, this, la, 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 la. He just wanted Yazid to reform. Or at least allow people. But unfortunately, he didn't do that. But you know, where Abu Abdullah had a choice? Abu Abdullah had the choice of the time and the place. Meaning the timing of Muharram was a choice of Abu Abdullah. And the place of Iraq was a choice of Abu Abdullah. These are the choices of Abu Abdullah. Otherwise the rest is he pushed. He wanted reformation only. He said no, no, no. You must pay or I will kill you. So okay then I'm not going to pay allegiance. I have to defend Islam. Hence Abu Abdullah had no choice but to go out. And Ulama mentioned very well why Abu Abdullah chose Muharram. Allah of Abdullah could have embarked his journey before Rajab. Although we have different narrations. Some said the journey from Medina began in Rajab. Some said it began in Ramadan. We have narrations, different narrations. Although we celebrate, we commemorate more of Rajab. But he time it that way. Why Muharram? Ah, if it was beginning of 2018, most of us would be having our resolution. I ask you, coming tonight, did you have a resolution? Question that shows seriousness. What is your resolution for Muharram? When we go tonight, we need to do this homework. So about Abdullah said, beginning of the year, so that in the beginning, nothing will be in the mind except this message of Abdullah. We need to have our resolution for Muharram. What do I want to do? What do I want to become when it comes to my relationship with Ahlul Bayt? This is very, very important. I know Muharram, we feel in the mosque. After Muharram, mosque is empty, becomes white elephant. So here is the blessings of Muharram. But at the end of the day, take out something. So put up, you and your wife sit together and your children, put up a resolution for Muharram. And la- last one. Why did Abba Abdullah choose Ah? Inshallah, we'll leave you with this and then tomorrow we'll continue. Inshallah, it will be serious. Why Abba Abdullah chose Iraq? Could have gone to Yemen. But there were Shias in Yemen also by then. Could have gone to Iran. He could have gone to Ehsa Katif. Because that time Ehsa Katif were like Bahrain. And there were Shias there. Why did Abba Abdullah choose Iraq or choose Iraq? It's a beautiful, very important question. Because of two reasons. Wallah. And those of you who go Ziara, you will understand these two reasons and you will appreciate it. Number one reason, because that time, Shism was spreading like fire in Iraq. That is why, no surprise, majority of the companions of al Bayt are Iraqis. It is of the challenges that Iraqis are, but majority of the companions are Iraqis. 
You look at the 72 companions. Half of them are Iraqis. Then you have Hijazis. Huh? And then you have some Yemenis there. Okay? And then you have John there coming. But half of them are Iraqis. Because it was growing. A majority of the companions of Amir are Iraqis. Kumaili ibn Ziyad al Nakhai, Iraqi, Kufi. Hijri ibn Adi al Kindi, Iraqi, Kufi. Maitham al Tamar, Iraqi, Kufi. So Abba Abdullah chose Iraq because he knew, yes, they may stay away from the letter, but the same people will defend Abba Abdullah. Today, Billahi Alek, you are living peacefully here in this part of the world. We are living nice life. But when you go to Iraq, that love the Iraqis have for Al Bayt, don't you get ashamed? Arba'in. We go every year, Allah bless us. When you walk, you ask them, How are you managing? Said, I saved the whole year. You cannot even save two years to give to the reward of Allah. So, Abba Abdullah chose Iraq because he knew the reason, huh? Number two, Abba Abdullah chose Iraq because Iraq is a strategic place. Surrounded from the east by Iran. Isn't it? And from the north by who? By Syria. And from the south Yemen. And from the west, Hejaz. Iraq is surrounded by the entire Islamic Ummah. It's very strategic. Huh? That is why Harun al-Rashid, how many times he tried to stop Zuwar of Abba Abdullah from going. We are told, they used to, there was a shade, they used to be under the shade. Harun al-Rashid destroyed all the shade. But the next time he came, he found the Zuwar are still standing next to the grave of Abba Abdullah. Mutawakil al-Abbas, we are told how many times he dug holes on the grave of Abba Abdullah just to confuse the Zuwar. But this Zuwar at night, they would go and start smelling the soil. And when they would hear a nice fragrance, they would say, no, this is the grave of Abba Abdullah. Whatever they did, they wouldn't stop people from going to say Labbaika Ya Hussein. So when we begin chanting this Labbaika Ya Hussein in this holy month of Muharram, you're going to tell Ya Zahra, Wallahi Bibi Zahra, I know they broke your rib. They did not just break the rib, isn't it? When you went to the mosque, Ya Zahra, when you were coming back from the mosque after that powerful khutbah, Hassanayn were next to you. Zahra, we know they slapped your cheek. <laughs> we said, Ya Zahra, we know. When you were in the house, when they came and knocked the door, and Zahra, when you responded saying, this is the house of the daughter of Rasulullah. We know Zahra, they push the door on you. When they push the door, we lost Azra Tamoxin, isn't it? Huh? We said, Ya Zahra, we remember that moment huh? when Amir al Mu'minin was busy making the ghusl of Fatima al Zahra. Wallah, Asma bin to Umais called out, Amir al Mu'minin. Why are you crying like an infant? Amir al Mu'minin looked at Asma. He said, Ya Asma, as I'm busy making the ghusl of Fatima al Zahra, my right hand went and touched the broken rib of Fatima al Zahra. <laughs> we said, Ya Zahra again. When Amir al Mu'minin was carrying the body of Fatima al Zahra in the darkness of the night in the holy city of Medina, Imam Hassan came and sat next to the body of Fatima al Zahra. Narration says he called Amma, Amma. Arbabul Makatri said there was painful quietness, but then Abu Abdullah came and sat next to the body of Fatima al Zahra.
Abu Abdullah called out Allah. Oh, my beloved mom. Here we are told in the narration, uh, Amir al muminin was inspired by angels. Uh, go and remove Hussein from the chest of Fatima. Scholars ask this difficult question. Uh, if angels could not be here to see Hussein on the chest of Fatima, how did the angels be here to see Shimmer on the chest of Abba Abdullah? <laughs> this is my point, Allah. This is my point, Allah. You know what is my point? My point is this. We said, Zahra, we know what you went through. But tonight, as I begin my majlis, I sit here and say, Abadu Allah, ya Zahra, ma nansa Husayra. He said, Wallah, Zahra, we will never forget to Husayn. How can I forget to Husayn, ya Zahra? Allah Zahra, I can't forget to say So you pay your allegiance tonight to say, Ya Zahra, I am going to try my level best to follow the teachings of Abba Abdullah with my non Muslim friends, with my Muslim friends. I am going to try my level best through Ashura to bridge gaps and bring about unity. I'm going to leave you with the next line of Masaib. Allah, you know very well, brothers, if not because of the sacrifice of the people who came before us, we, none of us wouldn't have been here tonight. How many times Quran said, remember Ibrahim, remember Ishaq, remember Yaqub. Why Allah said to Prophet, remember, remember? Because Allah wants you to remember their sacrifices, isn't it? Huh? But Allah, you know what I want to say? Allah, if not because of the sacrifice on the 10th day of Muharram, which sacrifice? The sacrifice of the six-month-old baby. Allah. And which sacrifice again? The sacrifice of the man whose two hands were laid down next to Farad. Allah, which sacrifice am I talking about? The sacrifice of the man whose body was trampled by horses. You remember that moment when Zainab, she had like bottles been broken. Zainab came out, she saw Imam Zain al Abidin. She said, Ya Zain al Abidin, who is breaking bottle? Said, Allah, Amma, it's not bottle that has been broken. It is the ribs of my father. Life not because of these sacrifices, none of us wouldn't have been here tonight. That is why when you go home tonight, remember Imam Zain al Abidin taught us not to forget the Masaib of Abba Abdullah because he knew nobody in his life except Abba Abdullah. You know, Allah, Imam Zain al Abidin, the moment he was born, he lost his mother, Sharbanwa. So he knew nobody in his life except Abba Abdullah. That is why. Eating food was morning about Abdullah. Drinking water was morning about Abdullah. Whatever Imam Zalabdin would do for 20 good years, he was morning about Abdullah. He was saying, Alayhi salatu was salam. Imam Zalabdin would meet a butcher. He would ask a butcher, oh butcher, how do you slaughter this animal? Butcher asked him, how he said, do you give water to this animal? He said, what do you mean? Every animal deserves to be given water. He said, well, <laughs> he said, well, I'm asking because they killed my father without water. Ayyuktalu Husaynu Dhamma'anum bi Karbala Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajoon وسيعلم الذين ظلموا على محمد أي من كلب ينكلبه والآكبة للمتقين ما تمل حسين يا حسين يا حسين